Jessica. Hello, uh, my name is Jessica Zhang. I work for Intel uh, Open Source Technology Center and mainly focus on the uh, Yakto ADT. So basically, is what uh, Kim has been referring as SDK. We call it Application Development uh, Toolkit and uh, the Eclipse plugin. And I also being this, uh, actively involved in the uh, user experience tools like Hub and the uh, Web Hub. So uh, I know this is the last session. That's, uh, luckily, that's, uh, with Kim's talks and also especially uh, uh, the usage model and the flows, it's basically cover lots of the uh, upfront, uh, the context and the knowledge base that the people need to yeah, know. So uh, I'm going to talk about this. Uh, the talk is uh, going to this, uh, build up some this, uh, concept level of the, what is the application development toolkits and what's the usage flow and roles. So this part should be very this, uh, easy for people to understand now with this uh, repeat this uh, mentioning of prior sessions. And then I'm going to talk about the Yakto Project's Eclipse plugin and so how it can be used with the as a IDE, that's an environment for both the uh, application developer and system developers. And also, that's a, with this IDE, we know that the Yakto project is really that's a, not just about the build system, it's really an umbrella project. And uh, underneath, is, it contains lots of this, uh, uh, tools. So within this, uh, this Eclipse plugin, you uh, can interact with uh, interact with all these uh, uh, Yakto projects tools. And all of this, this uh, I've created this uh, as Tom this did for the kernel, a self-guided uh, hands-on lab. So uh, it's posted on the Yakto projects uh, website. By following that, uh, each lab session uh, basically is give you the first hand uh, experience and playing with this uh, Yakto projects, this uh, ADT Eclipse, Eclipse plugin and uh, also the tools like a hub and the Yakto BSP. Um, I'm probably going to this, uh, just to speed up and also this, uh, focus a little bit about the last uh, item is the ADT and the Eclipse for cross-compile kernel modules. This is something that's recently that's, uh, uh, has been uh, live that's, uh, uh, topics on the mailing list and seems a usage model, a new model that's uh, some people that uh, are interested in, uh, and they are developing their loadable kernel modules by using this. Uh, yeah, now kind of like have the uh, the kernel source. All this uh, they using trying to use ADT and also this, uh, the cross development environment, not on the targets. And yeah, so I'm going to this uh, walk through this. Uh, yeah, how basically was the required steps and how you do that. So you've seen this and uh, uh, and. Basically, that's a, with the system development, that's a, you produce that's a, a, a cross two chain, which is the SDK. And also, that there's two key part, key components of the, for application development. One is the, the cross two chain, and the other is the sys root. So basically, the sys root is the, your target root FS that's extracted, so that's give you exactly the same that's a contents as your targets, the device that allows the application developer to develop their application yeah, against. There are uh, many three ways to set up your ADT, that's a, a cross-development environment. So basically, that's what I talk of, uh, about ADT setup, is, I mean, that's a, the Two chain and the sys root. So one way is the SDK tarball. So this is basically that's a, when you do this a bit big, that's a meta two chain or meta two chain G, uh, GMAE or SDK, and also the latest that's a, the new that's a, a one three feature is create the two chain two chain tarball matching you that's a, a target uh, image is that's a, a by doing that's a, the bit big your image name dash populate SDK. So with this tarball, it basically contains both your two chain and a sys root. And especially if you generate this uh, using the matching you as a target image, that sys root contents is exactly what you have on your targets. And the other one is the ADT installer. 
So uh, with the ADT installer, it requires, <coughs> uh, first of all, it uh, depends on the, uh, the package format is IPK. And it requires you have needs to set up a pre that's a populate the repo based on your that's a build outputs. But what it does does is give you the ultimate uh, flexibility to allows you to mapping your toolchain and your sysroot setup. So in this way, that's a, with the SDK tarball, basically you have a toolchain and you uh, sysroot is one towards one target. With this ADT installer, is using a configuration files allows you to set up your sysroot. Maybe that's kind of. Uh, Using different that's a uh, uh, root FS this uh, image root FS or different for different architectures that's uh, the two chains. And the third way is if there's a let's say there's a for a person there's a both a system and application. So the the top two is mainly for a true application developer which doesn't need to interact with Bitbag or doesn't need to interact with any metadata. So basically he or she is just ha be handed over by a system developer, uh, either a tarball or a, a configuration file and install against uh, a repo. And for this, there's a person maybe that's uh, both needs to interact with both the, uh, the metadata and also needs to develop the application that's, uh, for this, uh, the final that's, uh, image or targets. Then there's a, a way that so you can use, generate the two chain in your the metadata environment is by doing this uh, bit big meta ID support. So all of these three models is the, the details is uh, explained in the ADT user manual. Uh, there are a, for one three there's uh, major there's improvements for ADT. One that uh, uh, Cam has uh, mentioned that allows you to generate the image matching SDK. The other one is now the toolchain is now as a fixed location. Now that's a toolchain basically that uh, can be installed at, at a, a user specified location. So this is the mainly that's a just a graphical flow. Uh, you use the Yocto metadata to do the customization. You do run a pocket build. This mainly focus uh, for into the system developers that's an area or domain. And the output of that is the package repository and also the image for your targets and also the ADT. And the image, the target's image and ADT can be used by the uh, application developer to further develop applications that's a go under, that's a go on. T uh, top of the uh, yeah for the uh, final the uh, the targets and so that's the fundamental of the uh, how you set up this uh, uh, with the Yakto projects how you set up ADT what is a uh, your cross development environment and the Yakto uh, projects Eclipse plugin is mainly the uh, for developers who wants to the, the ease of use and within IDE environment that uh, can interact with the uh, all sorts of the uh, things Yakto projects offerings so that's the main that's uh, uh, motivation of the Yakto projects Eclipse plugin and it is be, uh, built on top the uh, where extensions of the uh, uh, widely adopted the yeah, Eclipse, existing Eclipse upstream plugins like CDT, Linux tools, and RC and TCF. And it's integrated this, uh, the ADT, that's a cross development into the uh, CDT, so then it's seamlessly integrated and allows you to use the ADT cross yeah, environment to do your application. <coughs> And also, this is using this uh, RC, this uh, over SSH and TCF for this uh, remote interaction. So mainly, this uh, <coughs> people uh, developers who are looking for using an IDE, they not only want to just build their application, they want to allow them to, without leaving the IDE, allows them to this uh, remote debugging, deploying, and playing uh, interacts with the remote targets. Yes. Okay, sorry. That's a 
So the CDT is mainly this, uh, it is, the CDT means there's a, a C, C++ development toolkit. So that's the environment for you to write in C, C++ code in Eclipse. It's just the, like Visual Studio. Otherwise, Eclipse can develop for Java code, and so this is the uh, and Linux tools project. So it has this uh, uh, the auto tools. So e Eclipse is more like uh, the fun uh, uh, frameworks, and then everything is called a plugin. So it has lots of sub projects. So you basically, based on what you want, you just add keeps installing this in this frameworks or the foundation. What are the plugins you want? Want and each plugin. So these are the main this, uh, uh, Eclipse. There's uh, sub projects. There's uh, all this kind of like uh, standard plugins. There's people mainly for the embedded developers. They are interact with. So uh, Yakto projects and also there's a. Uh, uh, so the Eclipse. How the Eclipse frameworks works is, uh, it's like a big there's a platform. So you add what you want, and on top of you what you want, you also can extend what you want. So the Yakto Projects Eclipse plugin is, so this CDT and Linux tools is provide you those remote tracing tools support, auto tools support, all those kind of things. And RC uh, stands for the Remote System Explorer. So that's mainly for you that's uh, using different protocols remotely interacts with the, the file system, the files, and uh, do the terminals, the shells. And TCF is another framework for the remote interaction. So that's for target communication frameworks that stand for uh, what TCF is. And so the Yakto projects is either there's a build on top of it or extend existing there's a upstream plugins. So add the features and also there's integrated with the Yakto projects. There's a yeah there's a add-ons to it to them. So am I too? Is it no, people get a yeah basic idea? So uh, the Yakto project uh, Eclipse plugin. That's a we know. That's a when you work with the Yakto projects. That's a, they are that's a system developers and application developers. So the IDE it can be used for application developers. With if the IDE is used for the application developers, mainly they are in uh, using this uh, uh, the ADT cloud setups to build their applications and then. Uh, after they build their applications, they do this uh, remote debugging and remote uh, deployment, and then that's uh, just typically that's uh, how you do the CU works. So to set first thing uh, first, you need to do is you need to configure this, uh, the IDE to use your this uh, uh, Yakto projects, this uh, cross setup. So this is one of the main. And this is maps to this. So standalone pre-built toolchain that uh, refers to this. Uh, you set up your ATT either where there's a, a pre-built the SDK Tarbo or using the a, uh, ADT installer. And the build system uh, derived toolchain, that's the one that you have the metadata we, I mentioned uh, where the big, big meta ID supports. So the toolchain is embedded in the metadata. So that's basically three ways you can set up your uh, ADT, and it's all reflects here. It depends on how you set up your ADT, and then you need to configure your Eclipse IDE accordingly. So for it, for it to pick up the right sets of tools and sys to uh, build your application against, and the target options. So is you can as a uh, choose either using the uh, QEMU as your target, or use your external hardware. So if you choose QEMU, then that's a, you need to provide what is the kernel file and what is the. Uh, is, so if you choose the QEMU, that's a, the Yakto projects. The feature is it, you provide the kernel file and it's using the sys root as we mentioned. The sys root is this, uh, what your target root have has extracted, flattened out as your sys root. So those two is enough to boot up your QMU. And that's a good way that uh, if you don't have your uh, uh, 
real this hardware ready, you can boot up the cumula uh, emulator to s simulate your uh, true hardware. Yes. Uh, it may sound hard, but it's uh, also useful to run on a native platform. So is there any way that you can just set it up to your native environment instead of 3MU or NOR uh, project? You mean that's a, then that's basically that's you saying that you just fall into the four bags to this uh, you develop application and run just on your this uh, native yeah, then yeah that's what I'm saying you don't need this because oops <laughs> hmm? where are my things go is Dave yeah, somewhere Sorry, that's <laughs> I think this one here. Oh. No. no. Uh oh. No, oh jeez. <laughs> uh oh. Where's my stuff go? <laughs> now I don't know where they So can I open this? It's PowerPoint. You don't want PowerPoint. Oh no no. Yeah. How to open my file. Hang on. Where, where's PDF here? <laughs> That's browse. Where'd the so there's preview? There it is. Oh man. <laughs> 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 okay. T-shirts. <laughs> yeah. So. After you configure your IDE to use the uh, ADT, then there's a, uh, as I said, there's a, we introduce a whole set of Yakto projects, uh, projects templates. So that's quickly that's help you to start building your that's a, uh, yeah, that's a, uh, application projects using Yakto ADT. And he, this is this a screencast. So once you have the projects. And you do this, uh, uh, the config. Remember, you have the IDE wise of the ADD configuration. So by default, you knew newly because you're choosing one of the uh, uh, AD, uh, Yakto projects, this ADT templates, and it inherits your IDE wise this uh, setups. And then, uh, hopefully, you can see that your uh, uh, the cross two chains and all those things and the see through the libraries, the headers is going to be used to build your application. And the other thing is, it's by default inherit your IDE wise, but it's, it allows you to change your specific projects. That's a, yeah, that's a, let's say you first develop against this a, a x86, and later on you want to this project moves to this ARM, and you can just change your this a specific project settings to, yeah, that's a, for different that's a settings, the cross development needs. And this part is uh, mainly the CDT allows you. So that's the UQMU instance you boot up. And you, it can be a remote hardware, true hardware as well. And this is this, uh, yeah, the GDB session that is bring up on your development host. So that's basically sum summarized for the uh, flow, main flow you compile. De, uh, deploy and debugs that's uh, for application developer perspective and this is we also support for the system developer needs so for system developer mainly they need to interact with the uh, the metadata to support that we introduce a new project types called bit big commander projects type and also there's a uh, here if you install our plugin you can by default, that project type is available for you when you do this, uh, the new projects. So you create a Bitbay Commander project, and it also gives you a wizard, allows you to either bring in your already Git cloned from the command line, the metadata, or it's going to clone, you for, clone one for you and uh, bring in this, uh, yeah, this uh, directory view in this tree view. The nice thing is, uh, with this, uh, the metadata editor, 
And you see this, uh, the syntax is highlighted, so it's much easier for you to this, uh, read a recipe files and to edit files. And also with the variables, yeah, too bad I don't have the setup. It has the hover uh, uh, capability, so if you go to a variable there, and then a, it's going to prompt you what is the variable the value is. Yeah, there's a, that's for the system developer, and then within the IDE, it allows you to interact with other that's a very useful tools and powerful tools of Yocto projects. One is uh, with this uh, uh, big, big commander projects, and you go to the projects, and you, there's a menu option called Launch Hub. So that's going to launch the hub using this, uh, you just <coughs> modified or uh, edited the metadata and allows you to this, uh, the build customization and all those things. The other tool is this, uh, is uh, Yachto BSP. So we have created a plugin for the Yachto BSP tools that Tom mentioned. So Yachto BSP tool is a very, uh, uh, kind of like walks through you, this, uh, a step by step, allows you to create it a standard, this, uh, a BSP layer and then allows you to further customize your this, uh, uh, the kernels and all those things. And with this uh, uh, Eclipse plugin for the Yocto BSP tools, it's really a uh, uh, wizard-like uh, how the steps for you, so it's much more simplified things. <laughs> so this is the screencast of the, the, the Yocto <coughs> BSP tools, so it's very simple. So if you, after you tell what your this, uh, metadata is, and all this drop-down list is going to be this, uh, by interacts with the Yahoo BSP populate for you, and you just kind of make your selection and go there. And yeah, this is this, uh, after you this, uh, have the metadata, you click on Launch Hub, and this is the main this, uh, the Hub view, and from there, um, let's see, you can just do your uh, build customization. So all this, this uh, it doesn't matter. This, uh, uh, I've created this self-guided uh, lives. This, uh, so basically, by following this live, this, uh, you get to uh, play around and see all this. This uh, application developer, system developer. There are five uh, lab sessions is fully covered there. So now I'm going to yeah, talk a little bit about this, uh, uh, using the ADT and Eclipse for cross-compile this uh, uh, kernel module. So this is using this uh, cross two chains and sysroot by the Yocto projects. And this requires you sysroot this, uh, the kernel ma uh, mesh targets and must con contains the kernel devs. So by default, uh, uh, our sysroot, our image, doesn't contain the, the kernel uh, development, the, uh, the sources. There's uh, two ways you can achieve this. One is that by default, we have this uh, core image saddle SDK, so that's mainly this, uh, our uh, development uh, vehicle image for people. So by default, it contains this uh, kernel devs. Or you can uh, uh, have your own image, and in the local.com files, add image install append kernel devs. So in that way, that's, uh, yeah, that image this uh, root FS going to contains the ker kernel devs, and when you yeah flatten it out as you sys root, you you should have your uh, kernel development this uh, yeah package there. So and then after you extend it, that's uh, your sys root. So go under your sys root directories. That's a uh, uh, user source kernel, and you need to do this uh, following two commands. What it does is when you build a, a kernel modules, it requires a whole bunch of the scripts and the tools. With that, because we don't distribute, and those tools build out requires you host, this, uh, yeah, depends on your host, wherever you host. So there's no way we can pre this, uh, yeah, distribute that into the images. So that's the, the thing you have to build yourself. And then after you have done all of that, then if you decide to this, uh, uh, develop in the Eclipse IDE, so you just go basically, this, uh, uh, all of this is the standard way. You new uh, projects, it's make sure it's a make file projects and choose the empty projects. 
So in the new this, uh, projects, uh, here's an example that you create two files, or if you already have existing this, uh, files, there's a way you can just import the files into the uh, empty projects. So this is my sample, that's a, uh, the hello kernel, that's a module. So it's nothing fancy, it's just kind of uh, create one is init, it's print one message, one exit, it's there's a print out different message. So this is the make file. And the make file, basically you need to specify the arcs, and this arcs maps when you do this, uh, uh, remember this when you build your, this, uh, the kernel tools, that arc needs to match this arc is whatever this your uh, target arcs, and you need to specify that the cross compile, and also this, uh, the other part is your kernel this, uh, uh, directory is. And with this, it's going to this, uh, set, pick up the correct components you want to use for cross compile. And the other thing is if you decide to do this, uh, uh, so there are two ways. This after you have this make file and this, uh, the kernel, this uh, module, this, uh, the C file. If you do it from the command line, this, uh, with the uh, ADT, this, uh, it has an environment setup file. So always, if you want to do from the command line, you need to source this environment setup file before you do this uh, run the uh, cross compile, because that's going to set up your cross environment, the path, everything. So it's going to this, uh, change your pa uh, path to point to look for this uh, correct the cross compiler linker, all those things. And so from the command line, you need to source that environment setup file. So the environment setup file is followed by dash, and what is your uh, the target arcs? That's, uh, the, let's say this uh, environment setup i586 something. If you want to, uh, your target is uh, x86 based machine, and you do this uh, uh, the echo pass. So if you want to do it in the Eclipse IDE, there's uh, one extra thing you need to set up uh, in your project files. Then you need to right click on it, or you just go to the project's uh, property menu, and there's a build environment. So you need to add a pass, that's a value, a pass variable, and the value should match to what your, that's a, uh, the pass set up in this, your that's a environment setup file. So basically, that's it. you need to tell this build where to find your cross, that's a tools, two chains, all those stuff. Then there's a, after you have all this set, if you do, do the build projects, your kernel module will be cross-built. And then that's a, you can use the RSE. It's very simple. That's a, too bad I don't have that machine. I can do a live demo in the Eclipse. It's so simple. You, if from a command line, then you have probably have to SSH into your targets, and then just copy over, and then do those kind of things. And with the RSE, you just create a new connection to your uh, remote, that's a, the target. And then it allows you just, you have a local, that's a file, and you have the uh, remote, that's a file system. You just uh, drag and drop, copy over. And also, it's bring up a launch remote terminal that's uh, just at your fingertips, and you can type whatever command so to test out you newly create the kernel module. So it's. Yeah, really, this, uh, once you have all this set up, it's very seamless. So that's basically this, uh, what I have. Any questions?